Sarah Jessica Parker, 20 year old son James, reveals why it felt weird to watch his mom and then just like that. And just like that, it says. Okay. And we're getting into it. And this is Acts chapter 7, starting at 26. And the next day he shooed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren. Why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong, wrong, tr thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begat two sons. And when forty years were expired there appeared him in the wilderness of mount sinai an angel of the lord in a flame of, of fire in a bush then moses saw it and he wandered at the sight and as he drew near to behold it the voice of the lord came unto him saying i am god of thy fathers and the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob the moses trembled then moses trembled and durst not behold so he, he's witnessing a vision God came to him and he's literally letting him know who he is and this alone is scaring Moses and causing Moses to think who is this what's going on Proverbs chapter 5 starting at the 7 hear me now O ye children and depart not from my words of my mouth remove thy way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house lest thou give it that thine honor unto others in thy years unto the cruel lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger and thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed and say how have i hated instruction and my heart despised reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined thy ear to them that instructed me right there when you don't you're going to realize you didn't listen to christ when you don't listen to christ you end up with a wicked ending and there's nothing that could be done proverbs chapter 5 let's keep going starting at 17 let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee let thy mountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth let her be as the loving hind of a pleasant roe let her breast satisfy thee um at all times and be thou ravished always with her love and why wilt thou my son be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger for the ways of man are before the eyes of the lord and he pondereth all his goings his own iniquities shall take the wicked himself and he shall be holding with the cords of his of his sins he shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Right there, you'll go astray without God. Right there, people think they're good without God. People say, I'm fine. No, you're not. By scripture, you're not. Proverbs chapter 14, starting at the 7th. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of prudent is to understand his way, but the folly there is favor the heart knoweth his own bitterness and a stranger doeth not intermeddle with his joy the house of the wicked shall be overthrown but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish there is a way that seem which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death even in the laughter the heart is sorrowful and the end that mirth is heaviness right there right there she thinks that that son, those kids, like the success is not promised. You have to earn it before God. He's the one that gives success. And if your parents aren't following God, First Kings chapter 8, let's see. What prayer and supplication so ever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward his house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according of his way to his ways those heart no, thou knowest for thou even thou only knowest the hearts of the all children of men 
what they gave they may fear thee all days what they live in the land which thou givest unto our fathers moreover concerning a stranger that is not of thy people israel but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake for thy shall hear of thy great name and thy of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm and he shall come and pray toward this house hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all people remember he said if you got something give it to it if somebody asks you for water give him water remember that in all of thy ways do that because that is godly strong hand and when he shall come and pray toward this house hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do they thy people israel and that they may know that the this house which i have built it is called by thy name thy people go out to battle against their enemy whithersoever thou shalt send them and shall pray unto the lord toward the city which thou hast chosen and toward the house that i have built for thy name right there god has a place set up for us right there in scripture once again let's see first kings chapter 8 starting at the 38th what prayer and supplication whosoever be made by any man or by all people israel will which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward his house then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every uh, man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou even thou only knowest the hearts of children of men that they may fear thee all the days they live in the land which thou gavest moreover concerning a stranger that is not of thy people israel but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy outstretched out arm when he shall come and pray toward his house this house hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name of the earth to fear thee is do thy people israel may know that this house which i have built it is called by thy name if thy people go out of uh, to battle against their enemy whithersoever thou shalt send them and shall pray unto the lord toward the city which thou doest has chosen and toward the house that i have built for thy name right there in the house of the lord everything representing the lord we have to do it with supplication and prayer right there if the builders had to do it your temple is the house which is your body so prayer and supplication are what sustain you too praying to the most high praying to the most high god giving him all supplication and all praise because he is worthy right there Hi isaiah chapter one chapter one starting at the fourth a sinful nation a people laden with iniquity a seed of evildoers children that are corruptors they have forsaken the lord they have provoked the holy one of israel into anger they are going away backward why should ye strict and the whole heart faint from the sole of the foot even unto the head there is no soundness in it but but neither bound up neither mollified with ointment your country is desolate your cities are burnt with fire your land strangers devour it in your presence it is desolate and overthrown by strangers and the daughter of zion is left is left as a cottage in a vineyard as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers as a besieged city except the lord of hosts has left unto us a very small remnant we should have been as sodom and we should have been like unto gomorrah hear the word of the lord rulers of sodom give ear unto the law or god ye people of gomorrah right now we're doing sodom and gomorrah same-sex marriage that's us we gotta we gotta turn to christ we gotta find jesus we have to all of us especially us even if these others don't we must because that is our salvation first peter chapter one verse one come on now peter an apostle of jesus christ to the strangers scattered throughout pontus galatia cappadocia asia and bithynia 
Those places exist right now. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to the abundant mercy would, which hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance corruptible, incorruptible, and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, for each of us, in heaven, for each of us. You you don't want to miss that. So that's why you got to turn to him and find him. First Peter chapter 2, how's this mock? We read first, now we're on chapter 2, verse 8. In a stone of stumbling, in a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew faith forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as a stranger and pilgrims abstain from freshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to the every ordinance of man for Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for praise of them that do well. Right there. That is what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to abstain from fresh, fleshly lust. War against the, the soul. We're supposed to do battle with the soul. So every day is a new battle, a new day. We're supposed to be doing consistent war on our soul to make it good for Jesus Christ. We got to become fresh and ready for him. First Chronicles chapter 16. Starting at the 16th. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac and have confirmed the same to Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance when ye were but few even a few and strangers in it and when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sakes man, for their sakes saying touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm right there you're not supposed to me a messenger of god you will be afflicted with wickedness messing with them right there psalms chapter 81 starting at the six i removed his shoulders from the burden his hands were delivered from the pots thou caughtest in trouble and i delivered thee i answered thee in the secret place of thunder I prove thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah, hear, O the, my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, and opened thy mouth wide, and I will fill it, but my people would not hearken to my voice, Israel would none of me, so I gave them up unto their own hearts lust and they walked in their own counsel right there that's why he allowed israel to go through what they go through that's why we see them now they went through what hitler put them through that's why right there everything right there it had to do with christ they denied him and he was there to save them so they went to their wickedness remember the devil seeks and roams looking for whom he may destroy and devour we read that psalms chapter 105 Starting at the ninth, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance when they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes saying, touch not mine, not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm so he did that for them i reread that on accident from me working my way through 
it was listed again. He said that for the people. That's why he was so mad. That's why everything came against him. Because he stood that way and they did not accept him. Right there by scripture, Mark chapter 1, starting at the ninth. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John and Jordan. And straightway, coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness, forty days tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now, after the John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Right there. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That's all I'm saying to everyone. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That I'm preaching to you. That I'm reading to you. From a book that was around before I was born. Repent and believe. Repent. For what you've done and believe. Believe the gospel. Right there. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, starting at the 25th. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, in so and much, that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For what, the, what authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey? And immediately his fame spread abroad, throughout all the region round about Galilee and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John but Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever in Anon they tell him of her and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she minute and he she ministered unto them so right there because her belief, it's your faith that heals you. It's your faith right there by scripture. It's your faith. It's about your faith. Do you have the faith to be healed? Do you believe in healing? Mark chapter 1, starting at the 39th. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him. And kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, but forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. He was he and he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, go thy way, shew thyself to the priest. And offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto him. But he sent, he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter the, into the city, but was without a de, in desert place places, and they came to him from every corner. Quarter. Right there, the guy couldn't. It was such an amazing thing. He couldn't help but tell people. He started telling everybody to the point he, Jesus was a celebrity. So people knew exactly what he did and what he was doing. And people came from all over to get healed because they believed. Guys, if they believe, you got to believe too. Why won't you believe? You got to look in your heart. Why won't you believe right there? What is it stopping your faith? What is it? Oh, I don't want to hear that story. Oh, I don't want to hear anything about that. It's people's hardened heart and pain from their past. But if you talk to Jesus, you realize it was the lack of your faith that drove you to where you were. So everybody right now, if you want a healing, you got to believe. You can't not believe and expect to be healed by Christ. You have to believe. believe your belief is everything to the healing. So if you don't believe, you won't be healed right there by scripture. Proving everything true. Galatians chapter 1. Starting at the 13th. 
For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many, above many, my equals in mine own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when I, it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal me his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately I conferred not with the flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which was were apostles before me, but I went to, into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other than the apostles, saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. Right there, guys. You got to pray for your brethren. You pray for your brethren. If anything you go through, if anything, wake up and pray for your brethren. Hit your knees and pray for them. Brethren are going through stuff all the time. Pray that Jesus heals them and comes into their life. All people who believe in not, not. And those are the prayers that save the people who do not believe in scripture right here. People pray for you. Unbelief. People who don't believe, don't want to believe. People praying for you, keep you alive or you be dead right here. People pray for you, a general prayer, and they pray for you. People still say general prayers. The day that stops is the day you die and your unbelief sends you to hell. Right there by scripture. You must believe and you must stay in belief and consistently pray for those you do not know. Because that's how you get your blessings. Deuteronomy chapter 32. By scripture. Starting at the 24th. They shall be burnt with hunger. And devout with burning heat. And with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beast upon them. With the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without the terror within. Shall destroy both the young man and the virgin. And the suckling. Also with the man of gray hairs. Yo. Matthew Brod Broderick. You're the man of gray hairs. You got gray hairs now. You're the husband standing right beside her. That's you, son. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation of, void count of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? That means the Lord gave them up to their iniquities and they're so solely consumed with their life that they don't turn to Christ at all. You do not want to be that person. You will see nightmares. It is nightmares to be separated from a holy God it's a nightmare you don't want that he's talking about being separated from him you don't want to do that that's why you gotta serve Jesus Christ while you have breath after you die it's over and we don't know the day we're dying none of us do Ezekiel chapter 44 starting at the let's see six and thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, and that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant, because of all our abominations and ye have not kept the change of mine holy things but ye have set keepers of my charge and my sanctuary for yourselves thus saith the lord god no stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of israel and the levites that are going away far from me when israel went astray which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear iniqu their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people 
and they shall stand before them to minister unto them because they minister unto them before their idols and cause the house of Israel to fall into the iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them, saith the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. Right there is why they suffered, why all those Jews died during the time of Hitler right there because your iniquity of your ancestor placed on you and they said, let it be on us. Let it be on our blood. To be funny, to be hard, saying hard things like, yeah, kill them. We said it. We said what we said. Being hard. And now they got, they paid the price. That's why. Because your ancestors made a, a wicked decision not listening to God. Numbers chapter 15, starting at the 12th. According to the number that ye shall prepare, so shall ye do to everyone according to their number. All that are born of the country shall do these things after this manner. An offering, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if a stranger so join with you, or whosoever be among in your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord, ye do so he shall do. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you and ordinance forever in your generation as ye are. So shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law in one manner shall be for you. For the stranger that sojourneth with you and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye come unto the land, whither I bring you, right there. He brought them out right there, but they didn't respect it. Psalms chapter 119, starting at the 16. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Gemeth, deal bountifully with thy servant, what I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I'm a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh. For the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that curt were cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Right there. The, <laughs> yo, right there. They're testifying about Jesus. You have to find Jesus Christ. It's testifying about him. You guys got to find him. When you leave here, it's done. It's a done deal. It's going to be too late. It's going to be way too late. And by the time you're searching him out, he's not going to know you. You got to find Jesus Christ by scripture right there. I read it just now multiple times. You got to find him. You got to. It's up to you too. He's not going to do it for you when you leave. Once you die, you appear before him and get judged. Once you die, we read that. Once you die, you stand, but you open your eyes and you're before Jesus and you're going to be scared. You're going to not know what to say, especially if you're wicked. That's why right now, while you're living, change Luke chapter 17, starting at the 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan, Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed, but there were there are the nine, there are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Right there, it's in you. We aren't gods. The word of God is in us. The same as Jesus is once we accept him. That's why you must have it written on your heart. If it's not written on you, you're getting kicked out and he does not know you. You have to have it written on your soul. It's a tag right there by scripture. We read that. You have to have it written on your soul. By right here, it backs it up and doubles down even more. You got to not only accept him, but believe and trust in him or he doesn't know you right there. And I backed it up with why the Jews went through what they went through. This is God's word. This isn't fake. What's fake about this? 
nothing. They're lying to you. And I'm going to tell you why. We're getting there. Stick with me. We're getting there. Job chapter 15. We're getting there. Starting at the 16. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water? I will shew thee. Hear me. And that which I have seen I will declare. Which wise men have told from their fathers. And have not hid it. Unto whom alone on the earth was given. And no stranger passed among them. The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days. And the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. And a dreadful sound is in his ears. And prosperity the destroyer shall come upon them. The, he believeth not that he shall return out of darkness. And he is waited for of the sword. Because, yo, how is this mocked? I was just, yo, thank you, Lord. He knows what I was about to say. I was just about to say these rappers. You're looking at a rapper. They're the easiest because they're the filthiest and most abominable. They do horrible things behind the scenes you know nothing of, let alone murder. We're talking about rape, many things that some have been convicted of, some have been accused of, and their money keeps them free. They're doing wickedness all the time using money to cover up. How is that mocked? The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days. Look at Tyrese. Look at these artists, these dudes that have come out complaining, but they're rich. They're complaining. They travail. They're never comfortable, never peaceful, never in peace because they do not have Christ by scripture. Right here, all explained. There's no debate in that. That's done right there. Job chapter 19, starting at the 12. His troops come together and raise up their way against me and encamp round about my tabernacle. He hath put my brethren far from me and mine acquaintance are verily estranged from me. My kinsfolk have failed and my family, familiar friends have forgotten me. They strain, they that dwell in mine house and my maids count me for a stranger. I'm an alien in their sight. I called my servant and he gave me no answer. I entreated him with my mouth. My breath is strange to my wife. Though I entreated for the children's sake of my own body. Yea, young children despise me. I arose and they spake against me. I arose and they spake against me. They're contesting the works of Christ as a lot of you are. What I'm trying to get you past. You're debating in your head. Is he real? Is he not? Is he? He's real. He's real, real, for real, for real, for real. Don't think about it. Just know he's real. This scripture, this Bible is not fake. Everybody who goes against it will die a horrible death. If you're going against this Bible, you're going to die a horrible death. If you're alive, hear me say this. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn or you're going to die horribly and God will not be there. And when you're before him, he's going to just throw you in the hell. He won't know nothing about you. You're gone. You're done. You're finished. Finito. It's over. Right there. By scripture. Wait, that was. Hold on. Let me see what other ones. By scripture, it's over. That's why you must find Christ. You must not offend Christ. You must find him and make sure you build your life around it. You got to be very serious. It's a very serious thing. People play with it, but they play with it till they die. Then people are wondering, did they go to hell or not? If they played with God and they did not accept him, you know where they're at. You know where they're at. They're not in heaven. I can tell you that. You play with God, you ain't going there. You will have no chance. It'll be over before you even know. Mark chapter 4, starting at the... 26 and he said so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not how for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself first the blade then the ear after that the full corn in the ear but when the fruit is brought forth immediately he putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come and he said whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God or with the, what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which then when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater 
than all herbs and shooteth but great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge until the shadow of it. Guys, listen, hold on. Youngins, all the youngins right here by scripture. I need you to listen. The word of God may mean nothing to you. You may be like, oh, this more God talk, more stuff. It is everything. Listen to me. It's everything. It is a world you're going to, you're destined for when you die, that you must know about, that you must adhere to. If you want peace, any type of comfort when you die, you need to know Christ. If you don't, it's everlasting torment. Everlasting means never ending. What's infinite? Infinite means you can't find the ending. It's infinite torture by scripture, guys. I'm not even there fully. I read bits and pieces. We're getting there. It's going to be very serious, guys. It's so serious. And I hope you're over there on Zara Rice Reserve. I read a very serious one this morning. Mark chapter 5. Let's get there. First one. Verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, and to the, unto the country of the Gardernes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains in, in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Right there. If you know there's a person cutting themselves, that's a wicked spirit in them. That's spiritual wickedness. That's no affliction, not a sickness. It, they're afflicted with a wicked spirit by scripture. You're not supposed to do that. And when you are, you got a spirit in you. Mark chapter 6. How's this mop? Starting at the 47. And when even when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea. And he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling in the rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed by them but when they saw him walking on the sea they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out for they all saw him and were troubled and immediately he talked with them and saith unto them be of good cheer it is i be not afraid and he went up to into them into the ship and the wind ceased and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder for they considered not the miracle of the loaves for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land again, Gennesaret, and drew to the shore. They Something caused their heart to be hardened. What did I talk about? A hardened heart. And they didn't follow the unleavened bread rituals. But they were amazed at what Christ did. So they were in amazement. They're starting to realize this man is who he says. You get me? They're starting to get it. Hopefully you are too. You're starting to get it. That you are turning to Christ. You're trying it. Seeing amazing things in life happen. And going, yo, you're real. Yo, that that right on time dude ain't lying. For real. That's all I want. That's all that would help me prosper. That's all that you realize Jesus is real. Right there by scripture. How is this mob? This isn't. They're lying to you. All right. I'm going to let that be. Guys, come to Jesus Christ. Do not play with him. It's very serious. Very serious. I had to really show you the seriousness. Like, it's so serious. It's so real. Take this with you. I'm about forget this. I'm about to give you a scripture to take with you. I'm not going to cut it short. Acts chapter 3, starting at the 4th. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given thee, I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked. And entered with him them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. 
and they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto him. Right there. Yo, listen. Once you believe in Jesus Christ, he's going to do a miracle. Everyone around you is going to be shocked. Let them know. Say, Christ did this. Say, Jesus is in me. Say, I accepted Jesus and look what he did for me. That's how you get more blessings by scripture right there. Speak on the works of Christ. Speak on the works of Christ, yo. Speak on the works he does in your life so he can do more. Stop wasting time. You're missing blessings. Come to Jesus so you can gain your blessings. Everybody, right on time.